Hey everyone, in my previous video, we covered a very high level overview of agent to agent protocol. In this video, we will build a custom A2A server. We will see how you can host any agent with A2A protocol. We will cover the A2A components such as agent executor, the task and its life cycle and how context keeps it all together. So how can we develop our own custom A2A server? It's actually very easy. It can be done in four steps. First, you should have your agent ready. Then you should define your agent executor. This is like a custom logic between the user's request and the agent. This is where the main integration of agent with A2A server will happen. Then you should define your agent card. This is like an identity card for the agent. It contains all the necessary information about the agent. Then you should wrap it around a stylet application, which can be hosted anywhere using UVCon. So in my example, I have one client agent that is AI assistant and two remote agents. This is the same example from my previous video. The only difference is we are going to build the A2A server ourselves, not using the ADK and build functionalities. So I have two remote agents, remote agent one and two, that's a flight agent and hotel agent. Flight agent implementation I have done is the very minimal implementation of the A2A server. And in hotel agent, I have introduced the task concept. We will we'll look into that in a bit. So flight agent is present in remote agent basic folder and hotel agent is present in remote agent with task folder. Let's look into the flight agent. So it is present here. My agents and tools are defined inside flight agent.py file and flight tools.py file. So it's a typical Google ADK agent. So I have imported LLM agent here, defined my instructions, and this is the agent definition. And this is the tools, the search flight, which is coming from flight tools.py file. The only thing I have added here that is runner. So runner is used to interact or call Google ADK agents programmatically. And it require all these services to store and manage session, memory, and artifacts. Now to host this agent with A2A protocol, we only need these two files. One is main.py file and agent executor.py file. Main.py is the main entry file which will start the A2A server. It has this main function and by default it will use 8001 port. So on higher level, we have to define the agent card. So for that, we have to define its capabilities. Like uh, does this A2A server support push notification? Does it support streaming and all of that? Currently it is empty. So this A2A server will not support any of this right now. Then we have to define the agent skill. So in our case, this agent will help with searching for flights. So this will define what exactly this agent can do. Then we have to provide these capabilities and skills and all other details here and define the final agent card. Then we define the request handler. So it is similar to a runner uh, with ADK. It binds the task store with agent executor. We'll look into the agent executor after this. Then we wrap it around A2A Starlet application and this can be hosted using UVCon. Now the core logic where incoming requests are directed towards the agent is defined inside agent executor. So it is present in agent executor.py file. This is a very crucial component. It is the bridge between A2A server and our agent. So first we have to import this agent executor from A2A package. Then we have to create our own class. That's in our case, flight agent executor. And this is the init function. We just added agent and runner in the class. So this is the root agent and flight agent runner that is coming from flight agent file. And there are two primary methods inside agent executor. One is execute and another is cancel. Execute method will be called when a user submits a request. And cancel will be called when a user tries to cancel the ongoing request. Execute method takes two arguments. First is request context. Request context holds everything about the request, who the user is, what they said, and what is the current state of the conversation. Context has a unique ID, context ID, and it can be used like a session in any web application. It 
helps to retain the conversation state across multiple back and forth interactions. Second is the event queue. This is the output channel. We don't just return a value here. Instead, we push multiple events into this queue. This allows for streaming responses, status updates, or asynchronous notifications. So inside the execute method, we are getting the user's query from the context inside the query. And then we are calling here self.runner. Runner is basically flight agent runner that is coming from the flight agent. And we are calling this method run async. So this is the method exactly where the Google ADK agent is being invoked. So to call this run async, we need the user ID, session ID, and the message in the Google ADK format. So that's what this input we are preparing here. So user content is types.content format. Then session ID and user ID, I'm producing it randomly every time. So this is a very bad idea. I'll show you exactly why. Then with this input, we are calling this run async function. This will produce a series of events. So that's why this is a for loop. And inside for loop, we are checking whether this event is the final response of the agent or not. If it is a final response, then get the final output, that's a final text from the agent and publish it inside the event queue. So it will be sent back to the client agent. So this we are doing here in queue event, new agent text message, that's the final text that is coming as an output from the agent. That's it. Our agent execute method or agent executor is complete. Now let's run this flight agent server. Before that, just make sure your virtual environment is activated, all the Python packages are installed, and your .env file is updated. Once you have that, you can just trigger main.py file. Just go here. And yeah, just run this. Yeah, so the, it started on 8001 port. Just to confirm, we can just copy this URL and open it inside the browser. We should be able to see the agent card. That's it. So our flight agent server is running. Now let's look into the hotel agent server. So that is present inside remote agent with task folder. This is exactly same. We have this hotel agent.py file where we have defined this hotel agent and hotel agent runner. Then hotel tools.py file where the search tools is coming from. And it also has the main.py file. Main.py is exactly same. The only difference is we have just added, this is the search hotels instead of search flights. The agent card is updated accordingly. And this hotel agent executor is coming from agent executor.py file. Rest of the things are same. And this server will run on 8002 port. Now let's see the agent executor. So this is also same. The only difference I have added here is the task. So task is mainly useful to handle long running processes. So whenever a client submit a request to the server, server instead of responding back with the agent response, it will create a task and response with task ID and its details. So client agent can use that task ID to check what is the status of that particular task. Or host or the A2S server can also respond whenever there is an update happening in the status of the task, whether it got completed or failed. So this allows both client and the A2S server to work asynchronously in case of long running processes. There can be multiple tasks inside one context. So the context keeps all the related interactions and tasks together. Task has a life cycle. It starts with the state submitted, and then when the agent is start working on it, then the state can be changed to working. And if some human input is required, so this is for human in the loop process. So it, the state will change to input required, and the request will be sent back to the user. User will provide the information, and then the status will change to submitted again, and then working. Then from working, it can go to failed, 
either or user can can cancel it or it can be completed successfully these states or stages of a task is something we have to manage inside the execute method so let's see the hotel agent executor so in our case we are getting the current task from the context we are checking if ex if it exists or not if it is a new request then the task will not exist then we will create a new task and publish it to the event queue so the client agent will get the new task has been assigned for their particular request then we are defining the updater here task updater it takes event queue task id and the context id details this is a very helpful uh, class to manage the states of the task so what what it will do is it has these functions like a start work so updater dot start work what it will do is it will change the state of this particular task to working and as well as publish that updated status to the event queue so we don't have to do that uh, every time so once the task status has been changed to working it's the same process we are calling the self runner dot run async with all these details the only difference is now the user id it is coming from this self get user id context it is basically nothing but a to a user and we are using context id same thing for session id as well so for session id we are using context dot context id so this will help us actually to manage the session with parallel to the context so when the context id changes the session id will also change with the adk agent then it is the same process it will return this runner dot run async function will return the list of events and we are checking whether it's a final response or not if it is a final response then we are using the updater class and then complete so it will automatically update the status of the task as completed and it will publish the event as well to the event queue and this is the final message and that's it our agent executor is complete now let's start the hotel agent server as well just open the new terminal and copy the command just add the current directory into the python path and run it again yeah it started on 8024 just to verify this just copy this agent card url yeah so we are able to get the agent card now let's run the client agent as well just open the new terminal search just go to client agent to adq web yeah it is started on 8000 port client agent is exactly same there is not much difference it has this ai assistant folder inside we have this agent.py and we are using remote a to a agent the url is provided for the agent card and both hotel agent and flight agents are added as sub agents inside this ai assistant that's it just copy this url and open in the chrome so let me take this here just type hello So hello, how can I help you today? So it will help to book flights and hotels. So let me just ask, find flights from Mumbai to Delhi for first gen and me alone is traveling. So we can see the events. Yeah, so AI assistant, the response will be sent back to the flight agent and it has produced the output now let me ask the flights for 3rd january so you will see 
why generating session id randomly is very bad idea so actually when we are generating the session id with the flight agent executor every time randomly so with each request the session id is different so that's why it does not remember anything that we asked before that's why it is asking the same thing again like all the details now let me try the same thing with the hotel agent so help me find the hotels in delhi for first gen so now the user or the request will be sent back to the hotel agent and hotel agent has produced the output now the same thing find hotels but only for 5th january so it will remember all the past information and most probably it will not ask any more questions yeah so it has produced the output so this is the importance of the context and the session so the session id if it keep it similar as a context id so even the hotel agent and remote the, all the remote agents will be in sync and it will remember all the past information so that's it for this video so to summarize the context gives you the input the task tracks and manages the life cycle of the work agent executor orchestrate the logic and pushes the updates to event queue by mastering these components we can build ai agents that are not just simple chatbots but stateful services that can collaborate in a2a ecosystem check out the code in the description and i will see you in the next video